pleasure to um, to speak with you. Likewise. And um, I just really appreciate your work so much. I had the pleasure of just arriving a few minutes early and being able to spend some time with it. And um, one of the things that came to the fore for me was a sense of um, that we fetishize data, you know, and the ability to kind of create data points for, for everything. Like, you know, and so I kind of see this as being like a social biometric that is happening here. Um, and I, my question is, for everything that data seems to reveal, are there things that are actually concealed also too um, by data maybe in generally speaking or that you feel like are concealed um, in the data points in this work? Uh, so if I understand your uh, question, is something hidden in data? I think yes, right? I mean, probably no one's, I don't think anyone's shocked by that. Um, you know, th this piece here um, began in 2014 as a series. So you guys don't know what's behind the wall. I keep pointing back to like, you know, what's back there. <laughs> um, I, it, it's, there's a, a 3D gun that was released on the internet back in 2013. It's called the Liberator. You guys might remember that from the, from the news. And um, that just blew me away. You know, like you're really going to take this data and you're going, you know, under some understanding of freedom of speech that somehow data is neutral and as a, as a kind of statement of neutrality, this thing can kind of go out there and live and whoever puts it out there gets to release um, themselves from any, absolve themselves from any sense of responsibility. I'm just totally surprised by that. Um, yet it happens all the time, I guess. And so the project was to take that same data and then cross the data points with all the, uh, it's a little more complicated than this, but basically the data was deformed by all the handgun homicide rates from around the world. And so you take that same file and you process it through an algorithm that distorts it by its potential damage and what you get is that image. And actually what it was was a series of engravings and then when Christian said, hey, you know, I want to put you in the show, one of the things that, and I'd be curious to hear your answer to this, one of the things that is hard when you work in these abstract spaces is how does anyone get the focus of that work? Mm -hmm. You know, it might be beautiful, it might be kind of engaging, hopefully, but can people access the threads, the activistic point, right? And so when I had the opportunity to do this, I go, well, let's, let's make it immersive so that it just overwhelms. And then maybe, you didn't ask this part, but I'll keep going. Keep going. <laughs> um, maybe abstraction can reach the level of meaning so that it's not just pretty, but you sense in some kind of pre-cultural way, which I suppose is impossible, but... Uh, Impossible. Yeah, but, uh, but approaching that, that there's something essential when you look at abstraction that, that hits you on a non-intellectual level. Mm -hmm. You know, hits you before intellect. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, the idea is could you take something born of logic mm -hmm. and turn it into something with a pre-intellectual edge mm -hmm. that, that does more than just be a series or a, a, a sum of numbers, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in an attempt to, so I see it as being kind of a sequence of translations that happens, right? So we, you're talking about the data points and circumventing a very like cerebral understanding of it and then sort of sensing into the work through the enormity of it. And then what? Outside of that, are you, um, is there an empathy that's activated or is it about the objectness of itself, because it does have a formal, um, a formal beauty to it, quite sure. frankly, you know? Yeah, I mean, on, on, on some level, it's kind of like painting, yeah. you know, like it, it's this sort of abstract visual language. That's but how I read it. The, the empathy part, um, it's important for me that the work that I make, I, I'm not... I'm not someone who works from this kind of point of expression. It's not about me. I mean, of course, on some level it is, but the idea is that it should be about you. 
you know, you, you should look at this hopefully and absorb something more about what is this culture that I'm taking part in that allows this to happen? And, you know, having worked in a more direct ways, I wonder if we're post-direct as a, as a society. Yeah, what does that mean? So, yes, no, so um, I'm interested in it. Do you have to develop ways that um, attract, inform, persuade that are not about direct communication because we've gotten to a point where we can filter out anything that we find uncomfortable? Right. And so, so is, is a way to um, empathetically pull people into the discussion by not trying to speak directly but by by being more seductive, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And so that's the beauty part, mm -hmm. is sort of trying to work in a way that hopefully has a bit of seduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see it as being an effective strategy in that way for sure. I was also curious about your choice to represent um, uh, data that's meant to be like 3D printed in a very, in a flat form. Um, so that's one question. And then the other question that goes with that is, um, I was thinking about the nature of the point, right? So what is, if there's even such, and the point after a while becomes like a fiction, right? Because it's not just that one, and I think your work speaks to this, it's not just that one particular handgun that's being printed, but it's the entire household that's impacted as a result. Um, or the workplace that um, is impacted as a result, um, so on and so forth. Because we are not just ourselves; we're kind of we're connect we have all these other relationships that are impacting our life at the same time. So, um, could you speak about a your decision to represent this um, in a flat way, and if you have ideas or have thought about um, a way of sort of representing data in a very rhizomatic, um, with a rhizomatic sense, you know, so that those interconnections between, it's not just the person who prints the gun, but um, the other people who are living with them, that sort of thing. Well, the, fir the first question is a little bit easier and the answer is kind of boring. Once the 3D data became so deformed, there was no way to turn it back into, it's just impossible to realize in three dimensions. Although I certainly thought about it and um, bothered a lot of technically savvy 3D printing people to try to figure out, could we turn this back into objects? Yeah. Um, the, the rhizomatic idea you're talking about, um, one of the things that I've wondered about this way of trying to work, um, and I think one of the reasons why we, we're talking to one another is that your work has a very, or at least this piece, has a very sort of data-centric quality to it, and it's almost like a texture of data. Um, and the, and your, your thoughts about twill and fabric and weaving sort of bring in that same, I don't know, flattening of media, you know, real things into digital space. And so I've wondered, and this is the way I'm going to try to answer that question, sure. should there be some way that you can identify, oh, that data point refers to that particular incident, or, or those data points refer to that particular country, which is the streams of data that I was working with. Right. And I figured, or I thought, that, I thought that that might take away from the larger impact of, on the one hand, looking at this thing as a piece of painting, mm -hmm. And then at the other hand, being shocked by what produced it. And I didn't want to devolve into detail, I suppose. I, if, sure. I, don't, I shouldn't say devolve, but I didn't want to, to be working at the level of that detail. I understand, yeah, the nature of it. I think, well, we're sure on time. Did you have anything else that you would like to see? Things on the horizon. Um, well, maybe a question back to you. All righty. Um, do you, when you think about, and maybe you don't, but there's a bunch of text data in your work in this particular piece. I think about this a lot and similar to the answer that I just gave. Do you want, does it bother you if people don't engage with it more for more time, if it passes over them as a surface? Or, or, it, or are you disappointed that there's not a kind of um, longer engagement? I mean, as someone who works with craft, I have a lot of patience for <laughs> the amount of time that it takes to actually experience the something being made. 
Um, and so I, I bring that same sensibility to media, even as I engage with it on any screen, that it takes a while for something to be made. Um, so it's my hope that someone learns to do that. They may not get it right away, but I think it's a good skill for all of us to have to um, allow things to come to form and allow um, for that time to happen. And for our last 30 seconds, we are now going to sing too, because it was so great when someone else did that. No, no I'm kidding, not going to do that. Nope. <laughs> nice to Thank talk you with very you. Much. Awesome.